Kevin Hunter and Amy Nelson on the Business Forum Show. Our guest in studio with us today is Nick Zerwis. And Nick is a new state representative in the Minnesota House. And Nick, we've been visiting a little bit about uh, some of the new things in the in the life in the daily life of a <laughs> of a new representative, and just recap this uh, the, the fine uh, environment that you have there, the living arrangements, and your nice overnight stays if necessary at the state capitol. Yeah, it uh, it gets interesting pretty quickly. You know, we're we're just under that cutoff that allows for mileage or or housing uh, down in St. Paul, so. I was told early on buy a buy a full size couch, right. and, uh, and and get comfy. And so I figured, you know, they talked about the long floor sessions, and so I figured, well, towards the end of session in spring, I'll need to be prepared to stay in St. Paul and sleep in my office. What I didn't understand, I mean, didn't foresee, were the late late nights in committee hearings early on. And because I was on the Health and Human Service Committees, we had a a March deadline uh, for federal compliance for the Federal Health Insurance Exchange. Mm -hmm. And so that really front-loaded with health exchange bills the uh, front portion of the session. And so way before I had expected and before other veteran members uh, of the legislature expected it, all of a sudden we're there and forced to be there till 10, 11, midnight, 1 in the morning, and you're going, oh, shoot, i got to be back here at 7 a.m. <laughs> and, what now? Yeah, and combine that with, uh, it seemed like uh, every time I needed to be down in St. Paul uh, before 8 a.m., mm-hmm. there was a good three or four inches of just slush that were there to greet me on my commute down and so after a few of those, you kind of go, okay, this just isn't worth the white knuckles and isn't worth leaving at five in the morning. And so we got to, we got to make some other arrangements. So sure. it quickly led to the, the nights on the couch and the, the morning treks down to the basement, uh, uh, creepy shower in the basement <laughs> of the Capitol. So <laughs> not, not glamorous at, at all, really. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to share with people is, we visited a little bit uh, early this morning about some of the, uh, which are kind of funny to me, but then when you think about this, you kind of wonder, well, what are people thinking? But I want you to talk a little bit about the story behind the beehive crossing or the bee crossings on state trails. You got to share that story. So uh, I think it was the Environment and Natural Resources Bill that um, just uh, the first version out of the house was watered down significantly. Uh, the Senate version, and then in conference committee. But the first version that uh, Representative Gene Wiginius uh, was pushing out of the House of Representatives was just wild, raising hundreds of millions of dollars in fees, in Mm -hmm. fee increases. Uh, Literally, some uh, items, uh, like a permit, if you live on a lake in Minnesota, you can apply for a permit to treat shoreline weeds Mm -hmm. uh, with a chemical if you have a real weedy lake you can treat not the whole lake obviously but your little portion so you can go in and swim whatnot but you need a permit from the minnesota department of natural resources for that Mm -hmm. um under this bill her the the fee the fee increase for that permit was scheduled to go up 600 percent wow (laughs) (laughs) and and so we asked well is there going to be more monitoring of lakes? Well, no. Was there more supervision or regulation for applying the chemical? No. <laughs> well, why are we going to be charging 600% more for lake own, lakeshore owners to treat their lakeshore for, for weeds? And she said, well... That, that money will go into the the general natural resources uh, fund, and we can use that money elsewhere. And if they own a lake place, they can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> As my neighbors on my on my uh, cabin, 
are selling because of that exact, not because of the lake weed issue, but because they can't afford the taxes anymore. And, and my parents have a place up north that they just listed mm -hmm. uh, for sale as well, um, because literally uh, now it's not an extravagant mm -hmm. place, but the, the monthly taxes mm -hmm. are almost rivaling the mortgage right, for right. the home. That's amazing. Uh, for property taxes. And it's to the point where, you know, my parents are retired now. My dad was a police chief in Elk River and, uh, you know, has a great pension, but, uh, you know, a good retirement. But he's not getting cost of living increases. He's not, mm -hmm. you know, able to make extra uh, money, can't work overtime to pay taxes. And, mm -hmm. and so he, he said, well, you know, your mom and I have to sell our retirement home because we can't afford the taxes right. on on the lake. And so you look at kind of that group of people as being a target mm -hmm. uh, for these, just, you know, always go back to that same group for the money for, you know, program X, Y, and Z. And so this environment uh, and natural resources bill, as it came out of the house, literally had hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Example of, of, of fee increases, kind of like that example. There was one on a huge 100% increases on permits for drilling wells and huge well surcharge fees and just fee after fee huge fees for if you have paint in your home and you have to there was a new bill all around bringing that was part of this all about bringing paint back to hardware stores and paint stores to get returned and then having to pay a fee or a recycling surcharge oh my goodness. on that. And then if you throw the paint can away, God help you, <laughs> for the fees and the penalties involved in that. And so fees were this huge kind of theme around this bill. And then the bill um, added just oodles and oodles of state employees uh, through the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and DNR. And we kept asking the question, well, what, what are these employees going to do? Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to implement the new programs. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just, you're just like stuck in this bad dream. And then the, the other portion of it, they, just some wild spending stuff uh, in this bill. One, if you go up almost on the border of Canada, there's a, a lake up there. And I, I, the, the name of the lake isn't coming to me, but there is a... Um, a like a rest area, park area uh, on this lake in this park, and there was in this environment natural resources bill, there was a a line item to build a bathroom in the park mm -hmm. for three hundred thousand oh dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm thinking that it, that thing better have a bidet. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, Several of them. Hey, you know, it's like going when you go to like a really fancy nightclub and you go in the bathroom and there's the towel guy that you right. feel obligated right. to throw the dollar bill in yeah. to the basket while he hands you a paper towel and starts <laughs> lint rolling your back. And right. yeah. I'm like, there better be a union worker in there with the lint roller or a bug spray dispenser <laughs> for a $300,000 bathroom. And then another aspect of it, was literally a program to, uh, and, and I know there's a concern um, nationwide, really, worldwide, about declining uh, bee population. Bees are natural pollinators. Um, they're a crucial point, uh, part of uh, sustaining natural resources, uh, certainly in natural, uh, natural prairies in, in the state and across the country. But there was literally, as a part of this bill, a program to put bee habitats, beehives, right, along the sides of state park trails. <laughs> 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 and so then there was a concern about, you know, is it really a great idea to put beehives and bees along state trails where families are more after. Why not put, we got a lot of, we got thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of acres of state park land and state land. 
why not put beehives and encourage bee development, you know, away <laughs> from the recreating public? But no, no, we, we need people to be able to appreciate <laughs> the bees. <laughs> and so then they came up with the idea of, we will pay $50,000 for signs along the trails to warn people warning bee crossing. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's literally $300,000 for bees along trails and bee crossings. So that bill, we had the fees, the employees, and the bees. So we called it Bees, Fees, and FTEs. <laughs> Very nice. Kevin Hunter with Amy Nelson and Nick Zeris on the Business Forum Show. Back in a moment. <laughs>